I'd like to welcome you back to the introduction to midwifery skills level two. I hope you enjoyed level one and it's exciting to have you back with us. In this next level we will uh, continue to teach you about um, how to take vital signs of the newborn and the mother and we will also expand on that to help you learn kind of where how to continue to kind of sort of support those vitals to stay in a normal range and when to know if they really have gone out of normal range to the point where you do need to consider transport and have that discussion and if it's an urgent transport then you just you know you have your protocols and you just follow those protocols you have your transport sheet um, it's in your manual you can look that up a transfer sheet for the newborn and for the mother on when you're going to transfer you can have all of their vitals written down their current vitals any past tests her GBS st status so if she has group B strep or not if she was tested in pregnancy what her blood type is different different important um, pieces of information so we're going to discuss um, transport we're going to discuss neonatal resuscitation we're going to discuss uh, IV placement and supporting uh, with an IV placement and we're going to talk about uh, physiological management of the cord care this is vital we touched on it in the earlier section in this section I'd like to explore it a little bit more in detail we will teach you the technique of cord blood collection as well as the technique of um, infant feeding, infant tube feeding for a preemie or an infant with a cleft palate or some other anomaly or uh, issue with breastfeeding where they do need to have an, a tube placed into the stomach to help put the breast milk in the body. That is very unusual, you know, but, it, it, but it's just a, a good skill to, to have in case you ever did really need to use it. So that's another thing we're going to do. You will also on this film get to see the full live video of Elias Cass's maternal physical exam. So uh, that's that'll be a treat for you to watch that and and it'll go through all the different different various parts of the exam and then you'll get to kind of learn and solidify that more as you repeat as you repeatedly learn something from a different perspective with different um, kinesthetic um, involvement that helps you to remember it and retain the information, you will um, start to build a foundation of understanding and those, that foundation will grow until you have, like we talked about before, mastered that particular midwifery skill. And that will be a happy day for you. It comes in increments and that's okay that's the way midwifery is it takes years really to develop the skill levels the intuitive levels the trust in the natural processes of birth and I think you know mentorship is really the way that 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 kind of works so you have these mentors that mentor you through these times and you will Build your skill to the point where you're in primary position eventually with supervising midwives who are wise, skilled, competent guardians of birth. And so just trust that process. There's no rushing this thing. <laughs> it's not, it's kind of like birth. You don't rush it. You just it's more of a it's more of a, a very methodical kind of step-by-step -step process and of course you're going into it with full-on intensity at times and then you're pulling back and that's how your brain processes when you pull back and go do something else or alternate the kinds of things you're learning about or the way you're learning so it just gives your brain a break and then you go back and then you, you're more ready to, it's, it's a part of the digestion process of new information. So just trust that process of back and forth. If you get discouraged on something, move on to something else if you need to and then go back to it when you're feeling fresh and positive about your progress. Um, 
So I just all the best to you in level two. I will try to explain as much of as I can of what you're going to be seeing, and I'll have a few more little um, uh, clips that are interspersed throughout, so I can teach you a few more little bits that I want to have you understand. And and I think most of it is really just supporting physiologic birth, physiologic birth, like the natural gentle birth processes are just so designed perfectly to allow the baby to just emerge from the woman's body naturally for the woman to reach down maybe she might feel the baby's head coming down and and then she's going to have this like sense of connectedness to her baby and then when she reaches down her hands which a lot of mothers would like to do this if you support them and give them a little bit of assistance but reach down her hands and bring her baby up to her chest on her own. And I, I'm just, I'm thinking of this as what I call a heart to heart with mother and baby. So anything in between mother and baby is an interference at that point. So I really think just letting mother and baby have that heart to heart, that first moment of heart to heart connection, it actually proven that hearts will literally synchronize their, their beating when they're placed close together. They've done studies on that. So you think of these mo this mother and this baby are literally imprinting. Their hearts are just, they're already one, but they're, they're, these are imprinting moments for that baby. Is this a joyful, calm, gentle, loving, welcoming place? For this baby to emerge into this family and just feel that presence of love and welcoming and joy. So having the father touching the baby, the mother touching the baby, just, just having them just have that moment of connection with that little newly entered soul with such a sensitivity to, I mean, just think of the beauty of that a whole evolution of that child coming out of their love growing into this amazing human intelligence this is this is creation at its finest so we want to just really have the respect of this sacred space that we're holding for this family in honor allow them those minutes of time leave that cord alone I can't say enough about that I just have tingles when I think that we are stealing blood from these babies. I know that sounds extreme, but it is not extreme at all. It's like the bloodletting of the olden days, except for there was the odd person that really actually benefited from the old-fashioned bloodletting because they had too much blood. Babies don't have too much blood. They have just the right amount of blood. And it is, it is a human rights... Um, it is a human right of every newborn child male female any nationality religious creed any 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 human soul who enters this world has a right to their entire full blood, blood volume and so we must change this practice so that we can honor the needs of our of our race which are we have a need to um, not be anemic. I mean, anemia causes brain, marginal brain deficiencies. That's been proven. And um, immediate cord clamping causes, um, has been proven to show that it causes severe anemia in newborns. I'll tell you more about that later. But God bless you and have a great course.